Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a fun thing to try and practice called spins and also how to recover from those spins. Now spins are uh, something I don't recommend in the real world. There's no guarantee you can safely get out of it. Again, think about how overstressed the poor plane is going to be when we fly out of a spin. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't even want to imagine it. At the same time as all those clockwork instruments are sitting up in the front, then you know, if they start getting whipped around back and forth or banged around inside a little container, oh my gosh, they are not going to like any of it. But in a simulator, we can have fun with it. So let's go ahead and go to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally spin the airplane. Now, the interesting thing about spins in this flight simulator is I find them to be much too aggressive. In the real world, I have spun an airplane before. I've been in the wah, 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 is the best way to describe it uh, kind of situation where the, you know, the plane's just ripping around, everything in the back seat is banging back and forth, and you're feeling like the blood moving places you don't remember it being. Um, in the simulator, it's rougher than that, <laughs> which I find kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cancel the automatic pilot here, which is holding us. By the way, when you practice this, get at least 3,000 feet underneath you. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle all the way back and I'm just going to let the aircraft start slowing down. So the most common way to enter a spin is basically use a departure stall and the moment the aircraft departs you simply push the rudder in the direction that you want the aircraft to spin in. Now the interesting thing is as soon as you do that and it breaks remember both of your wings are stalled regardless of what direction you're actually going to go ahead and feel the airplane spinning. Recovery procedure let me go ahead and actually a pause pause here. Boop. There we go. Pause pause. <laughs> uh oh that wasn't pause pause. Uh, but the recovery procedure is something we like to call pair, which is power, ailerons, rudder, and elevator. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we pull the power all the way out when we enter the stall, or the uh, spin, I should say. The reason we do that is that if you leave the power in, you have a tendency to basically start making the plane pull itself into a tighter or even flat spin. The next one is going to be ailerons. Don't touch the ailerons. Leave them as neutral as possible when you stall the plane and spin the plane. If you try to fight the rotation with the ailerons, you're going to stall that wing worse, which actually makes the spin tighter. The next one is going to be R, which stands for rudder. You're going to want to jam your rudder in the opposite direction of the spin. And then the last one, the E in pair, is going to be elevator. And we're going to basically jam forward in the elevator. Remember, your wings are both stalled. The only way you're going to continue flying is you're basically going to have to get the nose down enough to get air moving back over them. Now, one of the scariest parts of a spin is recovery. Because once you do stop the plane from spinning, you're going to find yourself in a situation where the aircraft is probably pointing at the ground and you're probably going very quickly. In which case, the next problem you're going to run into is not overstressing the aircraft in the recovery. The trick to that is just be smooth and get that throttle back. All right, let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do a no flapper first. Pull the nose back. We're just going to go up and we're going to go ahead and apply full throttle and we're just going to go ahead and fly the plane. The plane's going to start getting a little weird on you. There's 40 knots. It wants to spin to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and pull back and go ahead and kick my left rudder. And here comes the spin. We're going to go ahead and push it forward. Right foot, nose down, and we recover just like we would normally do. Remember, watch your speed, watch your speed. And we're good to go. So that was a pretty smooth recovery. I ended up uh, gaining 200 feet. <laughs> so that was pretty smooth. So again, you notice that I immediately threw the ailerons to neutral. I backed the throttle out. And I also went ahead and jammed that elevator forward and pushed my foot in the opposite direction. So let's complicate things a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my throttle back again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop my flaps down. I'm not going to do it yet because uh, we're not in the white arc. There's the white arc. Go ahead and pop the flaps down, and we're going to make this a little bit more dangerous. Now, the reason this is more dangerous is you've got all that extra drag you're going to have to overcome here. So again, I'm just going to hold the nose up like this. We're going to go ahead and apply full power as if we're taking off, and we're just going to go ahead and stand on the tail. Go ahead and keep the plane as coordinated as you can with a little bubble. So a little bit of right foot. And remember, the plane will want to go ahead here. Oh, it's getting loose, and we'll go ahead and go this way. And down we go. We're going to neutralize everything, push it forward. Whoa, apparently I threw myself through the floor there. Let me just go ahead and do a nice gentle recovery. And we destroyed the plane. So as you can see, it is a very, very dangerous proposition. And now if you're wondering, why did I overstress the plane that time? You have to remember, my flaps were down. The aircraft itself is perfectly fine, but once I exceeded the maximum speed of the aircraft's flaps, all of a sudden I ran into a situation where I probably would have bent a bunch of metal long before I would have been able to safely recover. So the uh, long or the short of it is, if you're going to be in a situation where you know you're going to be spinning the plane, if those flaps are down, they're just going to make it that much easier to overstress the plane. So again, remember, power is going to be neutral, or power is going to be out, ailerons neutral, rudder opposite the spin, and elevator forward, and you should be able to recover from any spin. Enjoy.